We can also use this idea of reflections to determine what a graph or how we can obtain a second graph. A reflection occurs over the x-axis or the y-axis. For the x-axis, I have my regular function and its reflection is sub minus or the negative of that function. And then a reflection about the y-axis uh, is where I'd have the function and what the function looks like with a negative inside the function. And we kind of looked at this idea a little bit earlier when we were looking at even and odd functions and looking at symmetry as well. So let's look, uh, let's look at an example here. So let's imagine that I have some graph um, f, of, f of x equals a cube root of x. And from that, I want to obtain a second function, which is that function's negative. So you can see that this is reflected about the x-axis. I have its basic function, comparing it to its basic function, but one with the opposite sign. So what does that look like? Well, if we were to graph that out, The basic cube root function I know goes to the point zero, zero, the point eight and two, and the point negative eight and negative two, which was eight, one, two, three, four, roughly there. And it has a little bit of a look similar to that. So what would, I lost my color of pins there on you folks, sorry. So what would g of x look like? If this is my f of x, now what would g of x look like? Well, g of x would be every point shifted or reflected about the x-axis. So this point 8 and 2 will become the point 8 and negative 2. Point 0, 0, still 0, 0. The point negative 8 and negative 2 becomes negative 8 and positive 2. And I just kind of reflect every point up or down about the x-axis. And so there's my g of x function reflected about the y or about the x-axis.